Okay, so six months ago, even prior to six months ago, for the longest time, we've been calling for the Trunda nerfs. Trunda nerf happened, so this video is showing what happened to Trunda after my scores before and after. So the the last video that I did with um, Trunda, I did uh, it sucks because it was negative affinity on like two or three different heads. So Trunda went out with like a whimper, but she still did a billion damage, right, on one key. Trunda nerf when, look at this team here. From IPR, he's got Trunda's up the butt, Yumiko's up the butt, Blessed plus Ford, Shu Zen, Shu Zen here, Yumiko's, and it's just, it's crazy, right? So, people were asking, <laughs> well, when is Trunda gonna get nerfed? Well, it's here now. Remember when they nerfed Cadaver into the ground? Do you remember when they nerfed Madman into the ground? To be honest, I never even got to try out the Madman thing. I feel like that was short-lived. I feel like Polarium saw, hey, we can't have a rare doing this good of a job. We can't have Cadaver doing this good of a job either. A rare champion who also did the, who also did the same thing as Trunda, just nowhere near as good. But Polarium, you already know, has the thing against having too many people have access to too many good options. They should have nerfed Yumiko instead. They're not going to nerf Yumiko, as we already know, at least for right now. We don't know anything about Yumiko getting nerfed. They said that they tested out nerfing Yumiko or something like that. They tried to implement different controls and changes, but nothing was going to work. So, you know, there, there you go with that. Three shoes ends with Godspeed, only a million dollars plus. Liquid Mantis says it's not even just one person. That account blatantly breaks terms of service by having been started, sold, resold by numerous people. Eventually, this guy will burn out, get bored, then sell it to the next Kraken, who will dump another 250k into it and make all three teams do 50 billion. Even solo Krakens are getting Krakened out by community accounts. That's crazy. It's crazy how many raid accounts are botted for years, only opening shards from the login rewards and then sold with insert champions here. They aren't even sold for that much money either. Player 0283 got, and they don't run their own accounts. These guys have multiple drivers for Live Arena, Plat Push, Hydra Clash. They also don't make their dungeon teams or anything. They basically are just sports owners and have team managers run their accounts. That's true because sometimes I'm, I'm always i'm always on the fence like oh, you know what i have a lot of things to do i should just have somebody do this for me like make this team for me or do live arena for me it's like i know how to do it i know that i can do it but do i really want to spend the time to do it because it gets to a certain point where and this might be a little controversial where it's just like time is the resource that you begin to value even more and that's part of the reason why in the beginning when i first started playing raid i heavily spent money because i was just like i i want to enjoy the game i just want to do the fun things that i want to enjoy i don't think there's anything wrong with that but in order for me to do that i need to spend money to get there a lot faster because if i'm not spending money i'm spending time and for me time was more important than the money that i i spent however the other side of that coin is or i guess the argument is why are you even playing raid then if it's become a chore to you so much so that you need to pay someone else to do the work for you or pay to play, then why are you even playing raid anymore? Like you should just quit raid if it's not really worth your time or not worth your investment, or if you're not investing the time anymore to have fun, because if you're playing to have fun, if you're investing time to have fun, then that makes sense. But if it's, if it's becoming so much work that it's not fun anymore, then why am I even playing it? I could see that argument and you know, I'm, I'm human. I'm not perfect. Spoken like a true addict. I do know how to play the game. I've learned the fundamentals. I've talked about this before. I guess I'll talk about it again because it's been a it's been a hot minute. For an example, if you make if you make ten bucks an hour, that's abysmal, by the way. Don't settle for that in America. If you make ten dollars an hour, you can either spend like three hours, three or four hours making a clan boss team, or you can pay somebody ten bucks. Just hypothetical. Just bear with me. Those are not the prices, but hypothetically, you could give somebody ten bucks to make you a clan boss team. Is it really worth your three hours, pl uh, probably plus three hours plus to make your own nightmare or make your own clan boss team? Or would you rather give it to somebody else who will do it for 10 bucks and they're an expert in it, right? This is the same way I approach a lot of things in life. I could, for an example, change the alternator out of my car. I've done it before, I know how to do it. 
but am I really going to spend the hours it takes to, you know, depending on the car, to take everything out, put it back, bend over backwards when a mechanic who does this for a living could probably do it in like half the time I possibly could and with less stress because if I do it, I guarantee because I don't do it often, I would probably be a lot more stressed than the guy who does it on the daily. It's cool to know certain things, but then you have to start asking yourself, is it worth the time? And that's where I was, and I, I give you that entire background because uh, that's what I was vindicating myself with. That's That was my justification for spending in raid. Now, would I spend in raid today? No, but I mean, part of that is because I already spent my way to get to this position where I don't have to spend any more, and I'm content with where I'm at in the game. But yeah, a lot of people basically do this. They have their accounts and then they just have people run it for them. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, by the way. I don't think there's any, any moral dilemmas by, with doing this. Like, if you just want to play the game just to play the game and have fun, who am I to tell you what to do with your money? With one small downside that you don't make any money from Raid. Why would anybody ever do this? I think people do make money. I'm not sure about each Kraken-specific drivers, but uh, some just play for fun but people definitely charge money for various tasks in game. Obviously, some of the YouTubers do it, but other clans and clusters offer their services from what I've seen. That's right, if you go to a lot of the other bigger CCs, they off, oh, here we go. Oh, let me finish this thought. They offer services and I've seen it just out of curiosity, I've, I've checked it out. Like I've seen 50 bucks to like a hundred bucks for like Hydra teams or like clan boss teams or dungeon teams. That's, that's another way to make money as a content creator. I personally don't do those things just because I don't enjoy really hopping onto other people's accounts anymore. It's just not my thing. I've got uh, too many other things to do nowadays. Two hours per uh, key Trunda teams are often being done by somebody else that's being paid 50 bucks or whatever to do it. I didn't know that. I didn't know they paid 50 bucks for uh, spending two hours to do uh, <laughs> something that resets every week. That's another $100 a week to save five hours of time when you're already spending a thousand a week on stones and shards. Yeah, that's crazy. I've heard this before, but now I'm curious as to the point of doing that. Surely there's something we're missing. Polarium consistently makes the game balance decisions revolving around these accounts. Some executive level is likely involved with the high-end account black market in some way. This was theorized on, okay, that's RuneScape. We're not going to talk about RuneScape. The blessings cost more than the champions. Yeah, probably. I mean, I wouldn't know. I've never spent that much, but dear God. She's not broken, remember. Yeah, Yumiko isn't broken. She's working as intended. Madman, on the other hand, if homeboy has spent that much, just let him keep his virtual numbers. <laughs> When you trade your three bed beach house for a raid account, this guy is a problem. Money, Yannicka Infinite Shield comp got an instant nerf, yet Trunda still remains. Trunda now, uh, six months later, is nerfed. So in case you're wondering what the changes were, um, one of the things that happens now is anytime Trunda uses this move here, the A2, she can't crit hit on the second hit. It used to be that you could crit hit and then the crit damage would be multiplied even further by hitting the decapitated heads on the spread. Uh, at least I, I think that's how it worked. But now that's not the case anymore. The other thing is now we have HP pools for the decapitated heads here. So this is a decapitated head. It used to have the purple bars, but now it has an HP pool and you can see that as it depicted here. So those are like a few things that changed. Her A3 hits harder now, apparently, I think. But yeah, those are the, the nerfs to Trunda. And as you can see, comparably going from a billion plus and again, it was negative affinity for Trenda, meaning she was weak hitting on like two or three different heads for the most part. And she still did a billion from a billion to not even 200 million is insane. But at the same time, I had my fun with it. I had it for two plus years. So I'm fine with it as long as the community is happy. But again, the community will never be happy. Hey!